The uh, academic approach to portfolio management, uh, corporate finance, et cetera, et cetera, is very interesting. It's a lot like long-term capital management. How can people so smart do such silly things? And yet that's the way it is. That's the great book that needs to be written, really, is, you know, why do smart people do dumb things? And it, it's, it's terribly important at, uh, um, because we've got a lot of smart people working with us. And, you know, if we, if we can just exercise all the, the dumb things, with, you know, it's just amazing what will happen. And to some extent, the record of Berkshire, to the extent it's been good, has been because we've, not because we've done brilliant things, but we've probably done fewer dumb things than, 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 than most people. But why smart people do things that are against their self-interest? Uh, well, is, is really puzzling. Charlie, tell me why. <laughs> well, the, you could argue that the very worst of the academic inanity is in the liberal arts departments of the great universities. And there, if you ask the question, what one frame of mind is likely to do an individual the most damage to his happiness, to his contribution to others, uh, what one frame of mind will be the worst? And the answer would be some sort of paranoid self-pity. Couldn't imagine a more destructive frame of mind. Now you have whole departments that want everyone to feel a victim. And you pay money to send your children to places where this is what they teach them. It, it's, it's amazing how these pockets of irrationality creep into these eminent places. One of the reasons I like the Berkshire meetings is I find fewer of those silly people. <laughs> uh, he excluded the head table from that room. <laughs>